accolades and have honored 133 authors in 11 categories and 11 official languages. This year, the awards in its lifetime achievement category will honor Dr. Ahmad Dango, CEO of the Nelson Mandela Children's Foundation, and he also holds various other positions, including at UNAIDS and at Rural Development and the World AIDS Campaign. Some of his most important works include the novels Kafka's Curse in 1997 and Bitter Fruit in 2001, but he's also the author of three collections of poetry, a novella, and a short story collection. He joins me now in studio, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, thank you for inviting me. I, I, ca I can't imagine when you're sitting down pen to paper or as an activist or as, as a leader that you think about winning awards for the work you've done. But ha what does it mean to you? Well, you don't think about awards, but this one is uh, an honor. You know, to get, be uh, nominated for a lifetime award is like someone recognizes well as someone who's dedicated his life to writing and literature. But uh, for me and for my generation, it was to more than that. Mm. Yeah. You're one of those very interesting people because you have a, such a, a prolific life as an activist and a leader, but then you've also mirrored that in writing as well. Um, where, where did this love of writing, pen to paper, that process, where did it start for you? Well, in many ways, perversely almost, I need to thank the South African government, the old apartheid government. In 1973, I was part of the Black Consciousness Movement, the student movement, and I was banned for five years, you know, um, and that literally, in the banning order, said not allowed to publish or prepare anything for publication. Mm. But also, I was not allowed to do anything else. And yes, under the Sullivan Code, I was lucky enough to get a job at an American company where I could earn a living. But my spare time, I devoted to my writing because I had nothing else to do. Mm. And in fact, it was my most exciting years because every time I wrote a manuscript, in those days, yes, it was pen to paper. Mm. I had to go and hide it. I had uh, manuscripts in my ceiling, in French ceilings, in the garden, under, because the, those stupid SBU were there all the time looking for documentation. So that's where it really began. You know, we were also part of a um, writer's group called Black Thoughts with yeah. Don Matera. 13 of us started this literary group that went around to schools reading banned literature to kids, you know, so. Boldness, when it comes to leadership, is almost an automatic uh, uh, um, criteria or part of the criteria list that you have to be bold as a leader. But being bold as a writer? Well, I don't think it's so much being bold as being true to your imagination and yourself and the way you see the world. Mm. Um, you know, people might say that Salman Rushdie was bold or foolish or brave. I don't know what it was, but I remember when... Um, but the fruit was published. Yeah. Uh, the kind of reception it got. There were those who said that I was undermining the uh, truth and reconciliation campaign, and well, others said, and uh, well, you know, he's telling the other side of the story. All I wanted to do was to tell the story of uh, individuals who have suffered. Um, so I, I think you know it is also being true to yourself, mm. your imagination, and the way you see the world around you. Honoring people uh, that, have, that have been activists, thinkers, leaders while they're still alive, and that's exactly what the Sala is doing, South African Legend Boards. Um, we've been having this conversation over the years that we need to re start recognizing our heroes while they're alive. Oh, absolutely. You know, when you post humor, there's no, no point in it. Um, yes, you know, people like, um, I'm, I'm not a Nelson Mandela or mm. Oar Tambo, they deserve it. But, you know, there are also... Maybe there is some retrospect, some people that we need to recognize if only to introduce their work to uh, this new generation. Mm. So for example, Saul Pleikis. Mm. I'm currently working on a novel that was inspired by his novel, Mahudi. Wow. And I really think that young people should read that novel. Um, written originally in Setswana, mm then translated by himself into English, and I find it a brilliant novel. So people like him need to be recognized. And we need to invite you back once you've uh, completed that project. Okay. Just uh, very quickly, uh, on a side note, a little bit earlier this year we broadcasted live from uh, the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital. Just a quick update, are we still on track? Is everything still going the way it should be? Well, I'm out of touch, you know. I haven't been at the Children's Fund for many years. I left the Children's Fund 
went to UNAIDS, came back and joined the foundation. But yeah. I, you know, Bongi, the CEO, is a friend of mine. And from what I understand, yes, they're on track. So yeah. we're going to leave it there. We wish you uh, l loads of uh, success and congratulations on your, on your uh, win in the uh, Lifetime Achievement category at the South African Literary Awards. We're talking, of course, to uh, Dr. Ahmad Dango, uh, who's also uh, written an extensive collection, Kafka's Curse in 1997, Bitter Fruit in 2001. He's also written a collection of poetry, a novella, and a short story collection, and just sharing his insights uh, into the Lifetime Achievement Award here on Morning Live. Okay.